Next, we're going to have Carlos Arredondo. I ask, please, everyone to look at the screams, please. This is my family. This is my dream. I born in Costa Rica. I came here as an illegal alien. And I try to do the best I can to take care of my family because it's the most beautiful thing that happened in my life. And I call my sons my American dreams. And I thank God every minute that I experience with them because they are my greatest teachers. Fast, please. This is Alexander. Many, many of you go through this moment in life. That pretty much was the moment the recruiters went to his school. He seduced him with $20,000 cash to sign up, $70,000, and so many thousands of dollars for him to go in the military at the age of 17. They only require one parent to sign up for him to join the military, and the other parent is left behind. That's what happened to me. I know I, I know a sperm donor. This is my son who I really very love very much, and they didn't have the respect to bother him to ask me if he is okay for him to go. They just they expect him that he just can come and grab our sons and daughters from anywhere they wanted to. No matter if you English or you're Spanish, they seducing our sons in many ways with fake promises. My son never have the opportunity to join the cash or the, or the school that is not even enough to go to college because you're going to a community college and not even pay for the liars they didn't tell him then. My son, one more victim, like many of us, of this immoral, illegal war that is happening right now, and it's affecting the whole world. Next, please. This is my son. When he was six months after he joined the military on the way to war. Next, please. Alexander, on his own words, testimony about his life. Alexander wrote many, many letters, many, many letters home in which he speak for himself. Next, please. You can read one of those letters, please. Tonight we were in a car chase and we pick up a guy with a grenade. I watched the whole damn thing. I didn't have to happen. I love you and I miss you, brother. Next. Next, please. Alexander, to his final days during the battle with Mutar al Sara and the old Syrian Najaf, my son is being carried in this truck like a guinea pig, easy target for anyone up there, you know, and this is outrageous how they bring our sons and daughters to put them in this kind of situation and also to send them there to, for their own minds to be broken. Next, please. One more letter of Alexander. It, took, it looks like I am going to be stuck in Iraq forever. It sucks, it's hot, it smells, and I'm quite merciful. But at that time, Alex's letter starts changing from proud to honor to miserable. Next, please. An another letter from Alexander. And he explained the pretty much circumstances he was living. He was hoping being home, going back to school. Then he's growing in Chile. He was hoping to, to take care of his family. Next, please. This is a picture of Alexander a couple of days before he was killed in the old city of Najaf, where the Marines, one four battalion, was cut off for four days in a four-story building where, which Alexander was struck by a bullet, a bullet in his left temple which opened his head inch and a half. Alexander was that day 20 years and 20 days. He spoke to his mom 12 hours and he told the miserable life he was living there and he was hoping to, that he wasn't hoping not to be with. Next, please. 
Many of our sons and daughters come on, coming back from battle war with broken bodies and broken minds. If my son was back home today, he probably would be under the VA system, in which I'd be very concerned about that system as well. But my son talk about his own path in life. He's resting in peace. And next picture, please. This is something that happened every few days a week across the nation. We're going for, to the fifth anniversary of the war in Iraq, and we are almost 4,000 casualties. We only talking in Iraq, no mentioning people and other wars. Please, next. And this is one picture. The, the, the I said thank God for this picture, because this picture is teaching me a lot. It's been helping me a lot as well. This is the casualty of war at home. My son, last couple Alexander Rodondo, is laying in, in an open casket. And I give, thank God, the opportunity because no many families or in Iraq or in the United States have that pressure moment for you to say one last time to your son with an open casket. And I share this moment with many other families, and my heart goes to every single one. Next. This is the casualty in, in, in a home. This is what happened when they came to notify the death of my son. I thought it was, that day also was my birthday. When I saw they coming, I saw, I thought it, my son was bad because I saw the uniforms. And I asked them to leave my house when they delivered the news in front of my house. I asked them more than half hour to leave, and they named the, the PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, they also affect many, many families, was already striking me. They never did nothing about it, saw me going out for more than half hour, begging them to leave. I ended up inside that van, 26% burn, second and third degrees, and a week later, I was burying my son in Boston. This was in Hollywood, Florida. And this is only one story of many families, they're going through the notification moments when they come to tell you, this is only one, they don't tell you, they don't want you to know that. This is what happened to my family. Next, please. That day, I spent one week in the hospital. They charged me $43,710. I didn't have the money. They leave my house. They leave my house. And this is how I go around the country, grieving my son. This is my pain. This is my loss. This is the first amendment of the Constitution that allowed me to participate. As a, as a father, it's my obligation to honor my son. And as a citizen of this country, my obligation to do anything I can to end this war, honor my son, participate, and let it know, all of you, that we can do it. Next picture, please. And in this picture, we went to honor more than 3,000 casualties and one of the many, visual, many visuals across the country, many organizations and people who want to end this war, we gathered together. This, this is what the family is going through as we're speaking, and many of us working very hard. Thank you.